Hi, this is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from the International Police Expo in Delhi. And here there is something which you will really love to see. In the era of dot coms, you have a forensics guru dot com. And here we have with us the founder CEO, Mr. Samir Dutt, speaking to us on what is this guru dot com. Welcome to ADU's chat room, Samir Ji. It's wonderful to have you here with us. And just let us know what is this ForensicsGuru.com? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ForensicsGuru.com is a 23-year-old company. We got set up in 1999. And we are the pioneers uh, in India for digital forensics. We have specialized digital forensic technology for things like you know video enhancement, call detail, record analysis, IPDR analysis and a lot of technology that is used for catching the bad guys. Our byline is solutions for a safer planet. Wonderful. And uh, you know, we are at this police expo, which is simultaneously also Homeland Security and also a drone, counter drone. So where does ForensicsGuru.com stand here? So just for an explanation for the audience of ours. Okay, so let me begin by inviting you in. Please do come in. And uh, uh, let's give you a general idea of what happens. You know, we live in a digital world today. Uh, in fact, uh, if you uh, uh, look at our country, we have a population of 1.3 billion people and we have over a million cell phones that have been sold here in this country. So uh, the way you know police investigate crimes is they start by looking for people uh, using their cell phones. And finding one cell phone in 1.3 billion is looking for a, like looking for a needle in a billion haystacks. So this is like you know an amazing big data problem and for that we really need solutions that can handle this kind of problem. None of the foreign solutions can cut it because in India our problems are you know at a scale which none of the other countries have ever seen. Uh, so we have homegrown solutions that can actually help identify criminals, their locations, their associations, their behavior based on their telephone activity. And here we've moved to Samir's next absolute uh, board behind him, which says intelligence analysis. Now, for a layman like me, intelligence analysis would be analyzing my intelligence. And I really think it's not that. So, Samir, let us know what is intelligence analysis in forensics. Well, uh, basically, you know, this is uh, analysis of information. Uh, from multiple sources. Now, information is basically, you know, huge amounts of data and until you can make sense out of it, it doesn't really make, uh, you can get no results. So, uh, this is a product which is called i2 uh, and it's basically from information to intelligence. It's a transition and we take intelligence, we collate it, analyze it, put it together and what happens is that you can get structured data, you can get unstructured data, you can get geographical data, you can get uh, information related to relationships, you can get information related to uh, activities, you can get relation, uh, information related to events, put it all together and get intelligence out of it. So this software does a lot of heavy lifting, puts this information together and produces uh, information to intelligence outputs which can be used by uh, law enforcement and other agencies. And also does that mean because nowadays you know information is all uh, locked under passwords and things like that. So is it easy to get that done? Is it easy to break into passwords and uh, get collate information? I mean how does one do it? A lot of information is protected by passwords. A lot of information is encrypted. Uh, some of it is easy to get, a lot of it is not easy to get and there are you know, specialized tools that help in that area. Those are different tools. Right. So and these, uh, these tools are simultaneously available in the market uh, generally or are they tailor made as per the requirement uh, you put up to the industry, the manufacturing industry? Well, there is, it's a combination of both. There are standard off-the-shelf off solutions that are available. 
uh, which can be you know uh, tweaked to be used for law enforcement purposes. You know, uh, a lot of the specialized hardware today that is used for things like you know Bitcoin mining and things like that, that can also be used for password cracking because they have graphic accelerators which you know enhance their processing speeds and allow you know, to crack passwords. Uh, but that said, it's still not easy because password cracking is a complex science. And uh, we can have another discussion on that in more detail later. Right. And you know, the next question which I have is drone forensics. Hard to understand, what is drone forensics? Drones are uh, probably one of the biggest pain points when it comes to uh, law enforcement today. They're used for struggling narcot uh, smuggling uh, narcotics, uh, weaponry, IEDs, and uh, also, you know, uh, transferring uh, secret information and things like that. And they're very small, they're difficult to detect. Uh, so, you know, there are what I, I would say a big pain for everybody. You know. So, uh, today, you know, law enforcement has a major focus towards drones. They catch drones using specialized technology, they bring them down. Once they've got them, what do they do with them? You know, they need to find out who sent the drone. They need to identify what what did the drone do? Where was it you know, going? Uh, what was its payload? What are the pictures it took? Was it carrying something? Did it you know, collide and route? What is the route it took? Say, you know, if, if it is a cross-border drone, did it come via you know, uh, one of the ravines or valleys that were there? And why, why did it follow that particular route? Maybe there is not enough patrolling in that area or whatever. So all that kind of information you can you know glean by examining a drone forensically. So there is data on the drone. You just need specialized tools to recover it. And MD drone is the go-to tool which is used for the purposes of extracting data from drones forensically. So for people like us and for the layman, is it the same thing as anti-drone technology, counter-drone technology? Uh, counter-drone technology is for bringing a drone down. Uh, this is the this is the post mortem technology which goes the next step that once you've got the drone down, what do you do with it? You take the drone, extract the data, analyze it and make sense out of it. Wonderful. And uh, just next to you is the video artificial intelligence of AI if I'm reading it correctly. Yeah. So uh, what does this mean? Uh, this is you know another big pillar of intelligence today. Uh, you know data uh, that most law enforcement get is in the form of you know uh, digital video. There are CCTVs everywhere. You know, every street corners have them. Every shopkeeper has them. Every house has them. So we've got CCTVs just about everywhere. And the CCTVs data is stored on DVRs. Now DVRs data stays for a fixed period of time. So if there's a cycle, say 15 days, 30 days, depending on the size of the hard drive. Now uh, once that data is there. Uh, it is there just for that period. However, investigations take longer. So by the time the law enforcement reaches a particular camera to get the data, that cycle may have passed. Now this tool does some magic. It's got this secret sauce which allows it to recover deleted and overwritten videos, which is really awesome. And once we get those deleted and overwritten videos, that can then you know be analyzed for evidence related to the crime. Right. And, uh, you know, just for a basic uh, information, all this put together, it helps the homeland security. Yeah, that's, that's the presumption. Now, uh, it helps only home, homeland security. Is it also a product which can be used for the military aviation, for the armies of the world, for the navies of the world, the coast guards of the world? How is that application available? Uh, or have you ever given it a thought that the market could be wider? Yes, uh, uh, I you know, believe that the market could be a lot wider. Uh, in fact, forensics as uh, technology is something that uh, can be extensively used by defense forces, etc., throughout the world. And it is being also used uh, currently by defense forces in certain uh, areas. I mean, take the case of coastal security, for example. Maritime coastal security, you have ships, you have the Navy, you have the Coast Guard, and things like that. You catch a vessel. When you catch a vessel, the vessel is using a GPS to navigate, right? And you want to find out where did this vessel come from, where is it headed? Because the, you interrogate the people, they're going to you say, oh, I was just fishing, right? But they're actually smuggling some stuff. Uh, take the 2611 attacks that happened in Norway, for example. They came by boat, right? They came by a fishing trawler 
actually the fishing trawler originated from Karachi and it was the GPS which gave this information away. So the GPS that was on the board, that was analyzed and uh, that helped uh, law enforcement find out where it originated from. Each of the levels were also carrying GPS devices or, you know, going from their point A to point B because they had never been to Mumbai before. They needed to get to each of their target areas. So they were, you know, given GPSs pre-programmed at the destination. I think this is a wonderful conversation and, uh, you know, I'm really happy that, you know, we, you could uh, explain these things to us. It's something new. The technology is new. The innovations are there and the audience is vast. So, you know, I'm very grateful that you did this with us and we meet again for the innovations which carry forward from here. Thank you so much, Samir, for being on our chat show.